I mean, what are you gonna say? The girl did exactly what I've been telling these talented girls who are suffering because of the music industry. People aren't buying music. Look, it, you know, Eve went through bad, woo! Went through bad music deals and everything. And you know, men get older and they can still keep doing their work performing and stuff, but something happens to women and I just feel as though, I'm not gonna even front. If you're dating, then make sure that you're dating with love in your mind, but also, if you're in a fledgling business, lock something down of some substance, like money. I didn't marry money. That was never my goal. I was stupid. Thank God this mess worked out for me. <laughs> Thank God. If I had a daughter, I would want her to understand that sometimes life deals women a bad blow, and I'd want her to be anything but an entertainer. I'd want her to lock it down and get that medical degree like Dr. Simone on Married to Medicine. They can't take that away from you. Or, or you know, get that law degree and be a good lawyer, not a public defender. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, really use the hell out of that law degree. Just use the hell out of whatever education you have. I like what Eve said that, you know, she wants to make her own, but there is nothing wrong with a, with a girl having something secure in the back. And she dates right. She went and got her count. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Kelly Rollins, girlfriend Sierra. Yeah, you, you know, I've been consistent with this, this whole count thing. And you know what a count is. It's a man with an accent who lives any place but Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me a <laughs> <laughs> she already had your account. He was a prince. <laughs> and, when, and the pictures of the yacht that this African man used to cruise that Eve around with and the lifestyle she lived, I wouldn't have even gone back to rapping. But that's me because I guess I'd be a lazy schlub. If I really landed account, work no more. That's what I'd be doing, gumball racing all through Copenhagen. Did you hear how fancy her life is? She left here to go to the airport to fly across the pond to meet up with the with the billionaire boyfriend. He's a billionaire and he's from a billionaire family, so his money is locked. She's gonna be driving for seven or seven days in a fancy car called a Morgan. So fancy, we never even heard of it. It's like a battle <laughs> I mean, I'm sure this album is going to do well because she hasn't been around in a while, but just in case she doesn't, don't cry for Eve. She's got a count. Who you dating? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we need that in your life. A count. And it's not even for a use. Like, she loves the guy. You know what I mean? Rutabaga. Damn. Rutabaga. I'm going to go in here and order me a burrito. It's going to be laying right here in the bottom of my stomach for the uh, Friday show. Which will tape at 145. Two o'clock now. Two, oh, two o'clock. Um, they're chomping at the bit. Wakey talk. I did the whole show without my nails being painted. I intended on at least putting clear on them. I always feel so conscious when they're all gnarly and rusted. I'm leaving tonight for Atlanta. And uh, my book signing is tomorrow at the Barnes & Noble at 7 o'clock on Peachtree. But every street in Atlanta is called Peachtree, so you, I, I don't know which Peachtree. I just know that it's at 7 o'clock. And um, that's tomorrow. And then all during the morning, I'm doing um, some radio shows and I think a Good Day Atlanta, you know, some TV stuff. Most importantly, I'll be able to catch up with my Fox family down there. We play on Fox, 10 a.m. live. And I'll be able to catch up with my boy Ryan, Ryan Cameron. Never forget radio. You know, when I was in radio, I remember, like, not all of them, but there were a lot of TV people who thought they were better than radio, and movie people who would just, it would be just, you know, a throwaway interview. They'd come in, how do you do? You know, kind of nose in the air. I'm glad that I came from radio, because now I know how to treat radio people when I have to go interview with them, and that is with respect. So Ryan, and I don't know who else I'm catching up with from radio, but I'm looking forward to mostly some really good soul food, which I'm going to eat with my hands. And I told you we have an eight o'clock flight and I'm all ready for my flight. 
Do you know the most important thing? I'm going to show you. I'll show you. Hot sauce packets, in case I want to have a little snack in the airport. There's never any hot sauce around. And in case I got to kick it up, sriracha sauce. <laughs> this is for when I travel and I keep them in my purse. Now I know that soul food restaurants in Atlanta will all have hot sauce and whatnot. They won't rip me off by trying to give me Tabasco sauce, passing it off as, oh, same thing. No, it's not the same thing. Even Tristan knows that, right Tristan? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you something about hot sauce. And I'm not too keen on eating airplane food, but a fatty is a fatty and we don't turn down a meal. When they come around serving that food, I pull out my plastic utensils from my bag. I carry my own. Uh, pull out my hot sauce, squirt it all over that freeze dried food. It's like five star eating. Look. And then on Saturday, Saturday we go to Miami. I have a book signing at seven o'clock at night at, um, oh man, it's a place in Coral Gables. I think it's called Book and Book. That's what it's called, Book and Book. Yeah. Coral Gables is right next to Miami. It's like the same place. Minutes, yeah. And what I like is, is that we're leaving Atlanta and we're landing in Miami early in the morning, like nine o'clock. The book signing's not until seven o'clock at night. So what do you think I'm gonna be doing? Eating around the pool, eating. I brought my bathing suit. <laughs> I like your necklace. Is that a read? Mm hmm. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Where are you going for lunch? Um, across the street. Across the street. That's where we have craft services. Um, you, my darlings, I will talk to you. Um, well, you know, watch tomorrow's show. If you're in Atlanta, I'll see you tomorrow and whatnot. I love you for watching. These are my magazines. I'll see you next time. Bye. Wendy, we're going to come in and call. And just so you know, how we got to the street, we're going to have free hugs. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll see you after lunch. I'm getting the sandwich. <laughs> Remember the sandwich from last week? Genoa salami and hot peppers. Woo! Extra oil and vinegar. Wig under the desk. Robe on. Nobody watching me eat it. That's what I'm getting for lunch. I'm back. It was a sinus infection. And those can be deadly if you let them go long enough. I thought here it was, I just had a regular old cold that was just a nuisance. And I thought the reason that it was lingering around is because I never took a chance to sit down. I know you're smarter than that, but maybe you don't have the kind of job where, I mean, if you don't love your job, it's real easy to take a day off as soon as you feel a tickle in your throat. But we're live, and I love my job. And I just always say, you know what? Even if I just go and do the show, it's only one hour out of my life, and then I can, you know, then I can uh, go lay down. But you know what? I left my job when I was in radio, too. Look at me. I have an announcement to make, and you're the first one to hear it. From now on, not at the first sign of a tickle, but certainly on the fourth day, maybe it'll be the, Ooh, okay, this is, a, this is gonna be a quick after show. is <laughs> here. Okay, here's the announcement. From now on, on my third day, maybe fourth, of feeling a tickle, I'm taking off. And there would just have to be a rerun or something like that. I, I, I'm not doing it to myself anymore. I'm getting too old um, to be running around sick with a cold for seven days, much less shame on me for running around with it for about nine days before I went to the ear, nose, and throat. But you want to know what? I didn't have time to sit down and I have too many people I'm disappointing, but I'm going to stop living like that. That's how we women are born. Are Please. You
I have something. Oh, you talking to me? No. You're not supposed to be eating anything. Nothing. All the antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> It's a one thing. No, what? Oh, yeah. Very serious about this. Um, I have too many people counting on me, as my husband lectured me, and as I already know. Um, so one day down is better than me being sick and coughing on everybody all the time. Uh, but I was just feeling, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, the reason that I kept working, the reason that I kept working is not only do I, do I have an obligation to be here every day and do this show? And that I love to do it. Um, and I still I didn't go to the doctors or anything, because normally maybe I would have gone to the doctors after the show. But I've been doing Broadway every single day. And in between the Broadway, you know, we're filming um, the, the special, what I told you, for uh, TV Guide, which will air in September. Uh, the making of Wendy going to Broadway, or whatever we're going to end up calling it eventually. I have, I, I've been doing things, and I've just been silently sneezing and coughing and getting through it. Um, it's been so bad that a couple of times I was just coughing so much I just got up and went to the other room to go to sleep. I just can't even do it to my husband. I'm just noisy. My, my son wouldn't hug me because, you know, of the coughing. He said, mm -mm, it's more than just your hands now because you're coughing like this and now you want to hug me. Um, I, so, yeah, Dr. Gwen, Dr. Gwen, she knows what she's talking about. I'm on some very high dose antibiotics right now though, as well as a few other things. And I am going to be ready for Friday for my Broadway debut. I've been off script now for a couple of days. Like, I just leave my script over there and I'm singing, and it, which is, that's a big deal to not have to refer to your script for what's my next line. That is what you hope for and I'm ready. You know, I told myself I'd be off script in time for Tuesday, meaning tomorrow, but I've got extra days to be extra off script. You like Kelly? Me too. I liked her wig. It's very rare that you can find a wig that makes a ponytail and you can wear loose. That was a good one. I'm sweating it out though. You know, all the sick. Like, I get, ooh, extra hot. Hmm. The bling ring was so good. I felt like a 15-year-old junior high school girl sitting there watching it. It was so good. Come on. Do you like my dress, Nicole Miller? Look, it's got shingles. Look, do you see? Look, see? Shingles, shingles, there's shingles. I call it the black and white shingle dress. I have to get to the Mac store, and then I have vocal lessons today um, with Joan. I have to get to the Mac store to buy um, the makeups that I want to wear to do my own makeup on Broadway. And I'm not going to get my red manicure until Thursday evening. Give my regards to Broadway, remembering Herald Square. Tell all the folks on 42nd Street that I will... Oh, I miss my cue. Soon be there. Sorry, I'm, I'm not in the program. Are we going to have our sleepover on Thursday? Can't wait. I've got my special PJ soon. Okay. <laughs> Me and the boys are having a sleepover. Oh, and Ro, my assistant. <laughs> We're having a sleepover at the hotel. I'm going to stay in the city. First of all, with this Broadway thing, there is a lot of staying in the city, which also has me feeling a ways. But you know what? Little Kev finishes school on Wednesday, and he got all A's and B's. And I, you know, for those of us who are mothers and fathers, we understand how when our kids do, damn it, you know, just do your job and do well, it frees us up to work. So um, he finishes school on Wednesday. Thursday night I'm staying in the city uh, to prepare for, I just have so much to do on Thursday into Thursday evening. So these guys are gonna stay over um, at the hotel. We're gonna have a slumber party and we're gonna read lines. Um, now, who mentioned the smoking jacket? Is Wig gonna wear a smoking jacket? I think everyone's figuring out. What everyone's gonna, okay. How about Silk and PJs? Silk and PJs. <laughs> um, Tristan won't be there. 
<laughs> but it'll be part of my reality uh, special. However, we will take a picture and put it up on Instagram and Twitter. As a matter of fact, maybe we'll take a few pictures. <laughs> I'm gonna. Huh? Oh, you got drink. Who said? It does look Oh, it's the lights. <laughs> We're gonna order something to eat and drink. And furthermore, I don't have to think about what I'm going to be wearing because I'm going to wear it, which you always see me in a um, moo moo. <laughs> I love you for watching. See you next time. Bye. A dragon roll, um, a rainbow roll, two miso soups, and an order of edamame. And uh, that's going to be it. I'm going to pay by credit card. Turn around. Turn around. Mm, 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 mm. It's a new neighborhood, so I'm getting used to the different restaurants. So I'm a one-trick pony. You know me. I, I tell you, you know, I can eat the same meal over and over and over and over for like six months until I get sick of it. So um, I wanted to try something different today. I wanted to try uh, the sushi in the new neighborhood. My uh, business partner, Suzanne DePast, is uh, in town, and uh, so we had a meeting. Uh, in one of the conference rooms here. But I did make an agenda of things that I wanted to speak with you about. I am um, actually hanging around in my office today uh, until, gee, I got like another four hours here before I go and meet up with Naomi Campbell uh, to help her out on a project she's working on, which we've talked about here on Hot Topics. Uh, she's got a show, I believe it starts in January, and they're taping a bunch of them. And I've only met Naomi one time, but the one time that I met her, I... For some reason, you just don't picture Naomi Campbell watching TV, so therefore, you know, I'm thinking, you know, all right, she doesn't know who I am. I know that we're on over in London, but, you know, according to all we read in the tabloid, she spends her life all around the world, and, and, anyway, so I said, Naomi, I'm Wendy Williams. She was like, oh, Wendy. She watches our show. She really loves us, and that was maybe eight months ago, and so now she placed a call to me. She needed a favor. Uh, just as we're starting our season four and I'll be placing a call to her because we need her on the couch, right? I want her to teach me how to cross my legs Naomi style. Where you get? All right, I'll do it for you. My thighs are chubby and my knees are knocked, but let me see if I can do it. She goes like this. Oh, ow. Ow, wait, maybe the other way. You cross your leg and then you take this leg and you wrap it under here and then your foot hooks around to the side. It's real sexy, like when you see it done good, it's, I'm not doing it at all, but when you, when it, when you do it, oh, it works well. Anyway, oh. so it's raining outside, and today, as far as I'm concerned, it's a perfect day to be stuck in the office. I don't consider this stuck, I consider this heaven. I know what you're saying. Hey there, lonely girl. But I love my alone time, honey child. On my agenda for today's after show, two things regarding yesterday. Uh, first of all, I think I was calling the wrong Emma when I was saying I was gonna get that short haircut, short boyish, the girl is about 12 compared to me, a young girl. I think I was saying Emma Watts, and it, I think it's Emma Watson. It's, it's Emma Watson just cute her pixie cut is just so cute not like Rihanna's pixie cut like Emma Watson's pixie cut but I think I want maybe a slink of bang um, just a little you know just a little slink down just to soften the blow of my uh, of, of my my look and I don't think that'd be a wig that I wear on the show I think it's just one that I just want to have I just want to I just want to see what that looks like so that's from yesterday's show. Thank you for correcting me. It's Emma Watson. And the other thing is, is that I didn't say ugly Jew shoes. I said ugly gym shoes. I could not stand a man sneaker. If I'm going to have on a sneaker, it's got to have a heel and be cute girl style. Or I love Keds. Keds. You might call them skips, but I just call them anything but a Nike or an Air Max or a Reebok. Like, I hate gym sneakers so much that I keep them in the trunk of my car. I cutely take off my cute boots or sneakers that I'm wearing to the gym, and I put them on once I get inside the gym. And I take them off before I leave the gym. Oh, the wig. Okay, so here's today's wig. And even Suzanne, you know, to pass, when I went down, you know, for my meeting with her today, she's like, 
I know you don't like to be told what to do. I watched the show earlier today, but I must tell you that short wig is, is everything. It is everything. You don't understand how thick this wig is and how it's cut. To get a cut like this, you see it has to start real short at the kitchen. And then, oh, Antoine, is that you? No. You're just in time for wig talk. Please come. Please explain to everybody what Antoine, 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 Antoine. What? There were there were three women in the audience today who said that they're going to cut their hair. That they're going to cut their hair like this. Oh, super. A super. You mean? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> First of all, what you don't understand about this wig is that it weighs at least five pounds, possibly eight. Six pounds. Easily. There is so much. You have to have such thickness in your hair. Second of all. Uh, this is not done with a flat iron. It is done with a roller, roller set. set. All right. Are you ready to sit sleep with rollers in your hair? Because I'm telling you, it's not just about the cut. It's about the style, too. And this little hanging off area right here, I know you love it, but you realize that you can't do this with the five hairs, the five natural hairs that you have in your head. <laughs> okay. You, this is virtually a pack of hair just to get the swoop yeah, right yeah, here, right? one pack. This, uh, Alex, do you, have you seen me with this wig before on the show? Yeah, you just wore it recently. Yes, I just wore it today. Yeah. Look, feel how heavy this wig is. Oh my god. <laughs> this is why I sleep with pounds. rollers. And you sleep with rollers. Yeah. This is nice though. It is nice, but oh. I'm, t I'm, I'm talking to heavy. people who are thinking of cutting their hair in this I'm style. Understanding the maintenance of what it takes to achieve that look. Oh lord. I'm glad I wear wigs. <laughs> Ralph Lauren. A navy blue classic sleeveless. I was so comfortable. It's just so easy breezy. This is affordable. Lord and Taylor. Ralph Lauren is so daytime ready to wear, chic and affordable. If a hundred and seventy-five or two hundred dollars is a little steep for you, just know this: you buy this dress, you wear it twice a month for the next three years, and you have. You know what I mean? Like, this is worth its weight. I mean, you're a working girl. I would recommend you get a dress like this. You can change it. Like, you can wear a shirt over it, you can wear a belt, you can wear it plain, you can wear it out. Well, see, she's learning You can wear it with heels, you can wear it with, with boots, you can wear it with flats. She's learning all that stuff because this is her first year out of college and she's making no money at all, as none of us did. And so you're learning to switch things around. Plus, here in New York, the apartments are so small. Your apartment's so small that when I come over there, we have to have dinner <laughs> in my car. We can't even eat. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to talk with you about is, um, do you remember the other day on the show, I was saying that I stayed up until one o'clock in the, in the morning, I was working on a project with my son and I wanted to crack his skull and throw him down the steps and I was so tired. Well, it all worked out because we got a 96 on that report. And he just told me yesterday, I'm, I was like, like, you don't understand. Our kid is just an average kid. So please, I'm not bragging by any means. But all I'm saying is that so far, this seventh grade thing is working out really well. And unfortunately for him, it's working out so well that today is the release of the NBA 2K13. He, oh, he's, my guy friends have been talking about it. They're all like, we're locking ourselves in the room. 2K, the new 2K is coming out. That's it. That's it. You, well, for, for me, no, well, for me, gifts are for holidays. They're for Thanksgiving, I mean, for Christmas and for, um, for birthday. But, and then anything that I buy him in between is always stuff that he needs. It just so happens that it's cool stuff. Like the other weekend, like he needed new jeans. So I took him, you know, we went out to the mall for our usual Saturday date and I bought him some jeans, some really good jeans. Um, when he needs underwear, you know, these boys, they'll, you all like yeah. the polo Ralph Lauren underwear and you like the band to be showing when your hips or when your jeans are swagging down. But if the Ralph Lauren underwear is not on sale, I'm not buying it. You are a Fruit of the Loom boy, but Macy's always has them on sale. So I do buy him stuff in between, but it's the stuff that he needs more so than the stuff that he wants. Now his father, on the other hand, that's the sucker. He buys the boy things off, off holiday all the time. So... His father, my husband, will get this 2K13 for him. Um, but he made sense when we were on our way to work this morning. My husband said, you know, I'm going to get it for him, first of all, because, you know, he's doing well in school. But second of all, we need to be happy that that's the only thing that he plays on that machine in his playroom. He doesn't play any of that shoot 'em up um, bang, bang, man at war, you know, casualty of war. He doesn't play any of that. Like, he's just totally basketball obsessed. And then during Ask Wendy today... I just wanted to talk with you about this because I always feel like 
when we do Ask Wendy, there's never enough time for me to really explain myself. And sometimes, there, all right, most of the time, I have more to say. By the way, I'm working on an Ask Wendy book now. You remember I was telling you I wanted to get back into um, make, doing books, so I'm doing an Ask Wendy book um, where I can explain some of my harebrained thoughts to you. The woman stood up in the audience, <clears throat> an older woman, she's the mom, and she said that her 28-year-old daughter has been involved with a man who has two children, and they've been involved with each other for, for two years. And uh, she, the mother wants to have a private sidebar conversation with this boyfriend to ask what are, his, what are his intentions. And mom is from the old school. I said, you mean, is he going to marry her? She said, yes. Um, he's 31, the daughter's 28. I have no problem with the age. What I have a problem with and will always have a problem with, and, and we can agree to disagree, is a 20-something-year-old girl dating a man with kids. And I don't care the circumstances, unless you can tell me you are son of Will Smith or, you know, Sly Sly, somebody, somebody who's parents have money and somebody who you know that the baby's mothers are being taken care of and that whole bit. I mean, there are very few exceptions to the rule in real life that I can even think of where a 28 year old girl needs to be throwing away all her goodness. And when I say goodness, I mean when a girl is in her 20s, like when I was in my 20s, you're in your 20s, you all have it all. You might be broke, living in a closet, you know, but you are, hold on, this could be the food. Hello? Oh, Joe, oh, I ordered sushi. I just wanted somebody to man the front door, but I already spoke to Pam. I did not, I, I, I did not leave the tip on my credit card, so maybe, maybe you can come and get the tip. Okay, bye. So, you know, this is my opinion, because I think better of girls in their 20s, even when they sometimes lose sight. Through all the stupid mess that I did in my 20s. And yeah, I did date guys with kids, but I compartmentalized them. You know what I mean? I knew... But not everyone can, that's the thing. But not everyone can not everyone compartmentalize? Well, that you all have to mentally get yourselves together. This is what I told and the also, mom. And also, you know, she's giving it to her a little bit. She's 28, she's rolling into her 30s. It's not like she's 20, 21 like me. You know what I mean? I'm, a new 20, I'm in my new 20s. I'm new. I'm still young. But <laughs> 28 is still young, but you're starting to roll into a different mindset. And, you know, she just probably just wants someone. She wants to be able to roll into marriage. She wants to be, and if he's going to be able to give this to her, at least give her the promise of that. Not everyone can just come. And they've been dating, and be they've like, been dating one another kids. for three years. For three years. Well, I disagree. And I think that this, this sometimes becomes the mindset of girls who um, maybe weren't shown better through knowing better. Mm -hmm. um, and what I was telling mom in the audience, I said, mom, I said, if you, she wanted to know whether it would be inappropriate to call this fella and, and have a sidebar meeting with him. <clears throat> I said, it'd be totally inappropriate. Your 28 year old daughter is a grown woman, number one. Um, and number two, it's totally inappropriate for you to keep badgering your daughter about what his intentions are. I said, we sometimes find it difficult to find fault in our own children. This was just my opinion and I shared it on TV with the mom, but in my opinion, the mom needs to be having hard-nosed talks with her daughter about how good the daughter is and look what you're getting into, a pre-made family at 28? Yeah. The boy wasn't married, so he's not a divorcee, and I'm not judging that. And it's also one baby's no mother, not two. I don't care if it's two or one. A 28-year-old girl. And you can tell me, well, you know, she's a, she's a, a checkout person at 7-Eleven. But guess what? You've got the freedom and the world to go back to school and make better for yourself or do better. The sec and, and, and I can tell you this as an old dog. When we women connect and when we have kids and, and then once we get married and everything, we give up way more than men ever will. And you take that from an OG. Mm -hmm. We give up way more. I'm going home. Big time. Career over here. All my life. All my life. On TV. Doing a, what do I do when I get home? Homework until 1 o'clock in the morning. But we got a 96. Yesterday. You knew I landed at the airport at 2.30 in the morning, had to watch the Housewives um, reunion, you know, on a portable DVD, you know, and, and come and do a live show. You knew that. You knew yesterday when I said goodbye to you, I said, you know, I'm going home. I don't have the luxury to just go home and sleep. 
I had to go home, I had to go grocery shopping, you know. Yeah, somebody could go grocery shopping, but you know what? I'm a mom. And when you're a mom, <laughs> you know, in my, in my head, moms go grocery shopping. And another thing, there were some things going on at Target, including these cute faux leather pants that one of my staffers, Joelle, has. I scored them, and I think I'm going to wear them for you on the show. Anyway, um, and, you know, we needed more things at the house, and I could send somebody, but I'm a mom. All I'm saying to you is that we give up so much more when we have children and get married. And I'm not saying how I would feel, but I know me right now. If I've gotten to a pre-made family, I don't know if I'd feel the same at 28 years old. I don't even have the maturity. I'm not saying that I would do that, but I'm just saying I was just playing devil's advocate and looking at her side, too. Well, I, there's no devil's advocate, advocate. If you're watching this and you're in your 20s, unless you have, unless you're a girl with children yourself, in which case maybe you know you find something in common with a man um, who already has kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ugh, don't throw it away. That's all. Don't throw it away. I've got so many social occasions coming up for him. Yesterday when I was at Target, I literally bought every bar mitzvah bat, bat mitzvah card and three separate birthday cards uh, because this year of 12 turning 13 it's like you know some of my mom friends warned me they weren't joking the schoolwork is no joke and the party situation yeah. the parties are no joke and then the kids you know like like my kevin don't judge me on this because it's not like i let him get away with this but do you know you know how when you walk and you get a crease in the front of your shoes or sneakers or whatever you wear? All right, so the kid is a sneaker king. If there's a crease in a sneaker, no more in life. he doesn't want to wear them anymore. Do you know that? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's a big thing. That is a big yeah. thing? Hate them. Well, somebody needs a job. Exactly. Oh, come on in, Joe. Hey, what's going on? Hi. Come, here, just come in, and I'm saying goodbye to the after show. Next up, Joe. Yes. Where is Be Your Own Kind of Beautiful? Um, it's lost in a studio somewhere. All right, well, I'm going to give it to, like, next week. Okay. You're hot, Joe. I was running. Do you want a water or something? No. no. All right. No. It's not like you get to run. <laughs> I'm out here with no shoes. I'm real comfortable. Look. Yeah. We fell in love in a hopeless place. Um, I appreciate you guys watching today. Because I'm a mom. <laughs> So weird to say class instead of class. All my life I grew up saying class, ass, gas. But in the song Cla Class that I sing in Chicago, I'm pronouncing it class. Holy crap. What a shame. I'm about to leave going to vocal lessons and uh, going vocal lessons and then I'm going to um, the Rita Cosby show on WOR here in New York. Rita's a longtime friend of mine and um, she's invited me to be a guest on her show to promote my book. Ask Wendy. Yep, still promoting. Didn't you have fun today, Sherry Shepard? Isn't she a ball of fun? Darlene Love. I love to hear the legends talk. <coughs> the cold lingers. So, <coughs> today's dress was the tightest dress I've worn since the invention of the Wendy Williams show. <coughs> when I tell you that dress had no stretch in it, and I had no idea what size it was. All I know is, is that I, it was ridiculous. I mean, he virtually made me wear that dress and nobody back here said that it looked ridiculous. I thought that it looked ridiculous. I was so conscious while I was sitting because I don't have, you know, that extra burrito when I sit down, but the dress was making me have the burrito in my belly. It was a size four. Four. I'm trying to figure out how did it fit up here then? <laughs> It was really tight. 
a high school friend was in the audience today, Debbie Winograd. She's married now. I, I don't know what her marital last name. And her sister Liz, who was in my brother's year, and her mom, Mrs. Winograd. Only she told me to call her Carol. I guess that's one of the things when you get older. Your friend's parents say, call me Carol. Debbie's daughter's an intern here at Wendy. I think I told you that. Remember I was, no, I didn't? Yeah. Isn't that nice? I didn't know that she was here. Nobody went around the back door and, you know, asked for a favor. That's my favorite surprise of all. When people that I know are just there, they got it on their own. You know? It's nice. She came and knock, knock, knock. You know, the intern with the lunch. You know how that happens sometimes. I said, hi, who are you? She said, you went to high school with my mom. I said, I did? Debbie Winogrand, she said. I said, I didn't just go to high school. We were from first grade to senior year. Do you know W-I-L-L? W-I-N, Winograd. We knew each other because alphabetical order. I could, all I knew about getting married is I wanted to marry up in the alphabet. I am tired of being at the end of the line. So when I became an H, I was like, yes! That's good for my kid. He'll never have to suffer at the end of the line. Oh, Tristan, my God! You suffer worse than me! I know, right? Zimmerman! <laughs> it sucks. There's nobody after a Z. All the food is picked over by the time you get to yours. Yep. Damn. If I married you, I wouldn't change my last name. I'll just stick to W. Margot changed hers. She doesn't, well, she doesn't know what it's like to suffer at the end of the line. <laughs> being a Z. <laughs> Bye, fellas. See you tomorrow. So now listen, I would love to. Is it going to be hot? Yep. Thanks, Ralph. Look. Oh, by the way, I heard all of you all. Who is Ro? Who is Ro? We wanted it. Ro is my assistant. And um, you'll be seeing her here and there. Not because she wants to be seen, but because today is the first day of filming for the first project from Wendy Williams' production. It's a behind-the-scenes special. It's going to air on the TV Guide Network. I'll give you the date another time. Today's the first day of filming of Making of Chicago. When Tristan gets downstairs with, with us, then he's going to pass me off to... Hi, Dean. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Dean Suspenders. <laughs> Bye, Dean. Have a nice day. You too. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. um, my production company cameras are following me today. And they're following me to um, vocal lessons and to my friend Rita Cosby's radio show and a couple of things that I have to do in between. Don't call it a reality show. This is a, this is a, it's just me being me. Let's just call it that. Oh, walk much? And it's going to be a special. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Class. Um, tomorrow Lucy Lou is coming. She's really pretty. I bet you she's nice too. Bye, have a good day. The back down easily, Tristan. I really feel like having a tuna fish sandwich. I guess that's one of the activities that I'll be doing on uh, Wendy's reality. Not a reality show. It's Wendy's reality. Oh, is that TMZ? Hi, where are you from? I'm from Pacific Coast. Oh, Pacific Coast. Yes. Most people say California. No, no, my agency. Oh, the agency of Pacific Coast. Coast. Thank you. Well, it's nice to see you. Camera, meet camera. Camera, meet camera. I love you for watching. See you tomorrow. You know what today is? Wednesday. Double show just for the summer. I am um, in between. What are you doing, Michael Lee? Released his new diary. 
which is ridiculous. So we're going to see it visually. We're going to roll it out for you. It's meat and it's just, just a huge. Well, we'll be the end of Hot Topics tomorrow. Well, we're now six degrees from The Rock. He's got, he's got a show coming. I mean, that movie's coming out in uh, July. Good luck, The Rock. Um, my size six skirt is a little big. Oh, I have to admit, I haven't really been eating the best since, uh, since doing this Broadway thing. I know you see me eat the fat sandwich and you're wondering how it is I'm losing weight. It's because when I, the two times I've eaten that sandwich, well, one time it wasn't the only thing I ate because my mother made soft shells when I got home. But the point that I'm making is if you eat a sandwich that's a thousand calories, but that's all you eat all day and drink water, you're bound to lose weight. Not the healthiest thing. So, I'm going in my office and I have, uh, and then I'm going to leave for a moment and go to the gym. And then I'll come back and do the second show. As much as I would love to have the sandwich, I'm not going to. I've got to take better care of myself. I normally do, but this Chicago thing, like, you know, like I get home so late. Tonight, do you know what I have to do? Uh, we have the second show, then I go for rehearsals at the Ambassador Theater, and then showtime for tonight's Chicago is uh, like 7.30, um, and they want me to trail the person who's my understudy, who's playing Matron Mama, until Friday, my, my infection. Um, so I won't get out of the city tonight until 10 o'clock. I won't be home until 11. It's a long, very, very exhaustive day. I know. You know, it's not enough to know my lines and to be able to sing the songs and know where to walk on stage. But now I have to know how to exit the stage, where I go. And, you know, it, it, there's foot tra traffic involved. And it's a very obvious thing, but maybe not to people who aren't familiar with Broadway, like me and you. But, yeah, so I'm going to the Ambassador tonight for a performance to see it from backstage. Oh, as I shadow the person who's playing Mama. Until Friday. Um, bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Everybody had a good time today. It's another 100 degree day here. Uh, by the way, it's not that I had surgery to remove my sweat ducts. I told you I got mirror dry shots. And I would say, uh, generally speaking, like today, that's it. You remember what it used to be? I used to have so much sweat, it'd be ridiculous. I go for my second and final shot in August. It's not 100%, but it'll be like 95%, which is better than it's ever been, that my sweat ducts will be dead. And that's that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. I love you for understanding and watching, and I'll see you next time. 145. 145. 145. We don't need a new refrigerator yet. So now I'm gonna stay being cheap. Do my part in those landfills. It's only $136. you when Bernie, my repairman, I called Bernie up and I was ready for the news. I was ready. Uh, Mrs. Hunter, it's time. But no, you know what he said? You know what, by the way, love this dress. I have it in red, I have it in um, lime green, yellowy, and I have it in black. It's my shortest dress ever and I love it. Look at old Miss Wendy, doing it. If I could just saw my thighs in half, I would wear some of those pom pom shorts. You know, like all the girls are wearing, but my thighs are a little too big for that. They're probably a little too big for this, but I don't care. I'm no Kanye. I really don't much care about what people think about me in terms of, you know, how I dress. Come to think of it, I really don't much care about many aspects of my life, what, what people think about me. Yeah. <laughs> You know what, Kanye, that attitude comes with age. I have to tell you something. I know this is a length for an 18 year old. I don't care. You're lucky I didn't come out there like this. Yeah.
are all uh, all unzipped on both sides. It unzips. It's Diane von Furstenberg. This is Memsor's idea. They're pretty. Er, probably on you than me. Here's Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. You're so now back to the refrigerator. Call me cheap if you want. I just told you I don't care what you think. Sometimes. $136. Apparently the freezer was leaking Freon. Are you wearing eyeliner? A little bit. Can we talk about my new favorite wig? Oh, what is that, Princess? Sister of controversy. Oh, yeah, I really like that. Blonde. Especially strong. after we tweaked it. No, after you tweaked it. Don't. I take credit where I need to. Oh. This is all, this is all him. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, the wig started out to be in my collection. And I brought it in to donate to the hair department here. It had been laying in your drawer for about two years. Or Not more. that long. Okay, and then about you took year. it out. I don't even recognize her anymore. That's because you have like just given me so much in terms of um, creative control. Like, and and this, the trust is very important. You know like, this has you. been my funnest year ever. And that's why I said I was thinking about you because I just want to text you and say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm having the most fun. I'm glad you didn't text, though. Yeah. I don't like to be bothered at home. <laughs> and you don't even answer your phone, so please, you got a uh, nerve trying to communicate with somebody. Because, well, you know, I go to bed, like, you know, mad early, 8.30. Yeah. Right, bro? <laughs> How does she know? Because <laughs> she calls me, so I'm like, leave me alone in the bed. Don't you all live near each other? Mm, we'll block away. We take the train. Yeah. Together every morning. Together. All right. Well, goodbye to both of you. Ro, I'll be ready in about uh, five minutes. <laughs> goodbye. Here. Tomorrow's the Emmy. Thank you. Oh, oh, good luck. Thank you. You know what? I don't care whether he wins or not. He's a winner to me. As far as I'm concerned, he has created the best hair on daytime TV. Oh, and that final wig, that coup de gras, look at her up there, the Pointer Sisters. Would you look at the Braxtons? <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. Beautiful. And you know how to rock it, too. That's what's really important, the confidence. You can't have a good wig without having a good mannequin. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. I concur. Come on, let's go to finish talking about the cheapness. Bernie said, Mrs. Hunter, only $136. I was so happy, only because... He said, it was just $136. Now, mind you, I don't know how your service people are, and I've run into some really shisty rip-off artists in past years, which is why I usually like to be home when somebody comes in my house, so I can look at them with Stevie J. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and still, you get ripped off. It's called the being a woman rip-off price. I find that women get a, like a 5% markup on just about everything that happens in the household. I don't know whether you find this, but I do. I know that if my husband was home, commandeering stuff, uh, there are some things that I know would not cost as much money, but they oh, you open up the door and they see the little woman, all of a sudden they think, you know, they can be charging you. So I call it the cost of being a woman tax, and I don't even have time to argue with it. But I couldn't be there at the house when, he, when Bernie came about the refrigerator, so our housekeeper was there, and I'm like, okay, here's the double ripoff. God bless him. He's not a ripoff artist. He could have taken a, a, a wrench to the back of our refrigerator, charged us a fortune, and then gotten a little bit off the back end of wherever we bought the, refrigerator, the new one. But he didn't. See? There's something called karma. And there still are good people in this world. And one of them is Bernie, the refrigeration man. <laughs> so now here goes Bernie. I called him up. I'm here at the office. And he says, you know, you have some Freon leaking. Not in the meat inside the refrigerator, but around back. Uh, just a little something, something. Uh, and he said something about feeling something oily and slick. I said, okay, so Bernie, how much longer do we have with this fridge? And so he said, well, you're going to need one soon. I said, how soon, Bernie? He said, you know, the next six months. So I said, perfect. Because I'm the type of person, if I know it's broken, then I don't want to take it all the way to six months for all, you know, everything to thaw out. And I don't keep a lot in our freezer. I told you I'm not really a freezer person. I don't like the freezer burn, but just the fact. 
I don't want to have to go into emergency. But if if my refrigerator freezer combo can just last me through my seven week run on Broadway, because by the time I get off Broadway, it'll be August 11th. And of course, Wendy's show, the talk show wraps on July like 25th. So I just need to August 11th. Then I can go around and really luxuriate and look for the unit that I really want and make sure that the panels get put on it the way I want and just... When it comes to home, I told you, I am a bit of a control freak and I don't like other people doing things for me. I like to do everything, every paper towel, every sheet, every pillowcase that comes through there, every vacuum cleaner, I want to know about it. I like my cans face forward so that the labels show. But I'm not anal, but I do like that. Like, don't mess with my cans, you know. And when you put the ketchup back in the refrigerator, you put it back where I had it. Not up here, down here. There are sections. <laughs> and do you buy, do you buy um, the kind of, oh, we use Miracle Whip. Do you buy the kind of Miracle Whip where you squeeze it out of the top? Don't put it back in my refrigerator like this. It's on the door like this. So it's always ready to fire. Don't mess with me and my home freakishness. Because you will see a totally different side of Wendy. Come on, let's go. I mean... Come on. I'm sorry. Look, we all have different sides of our personalities. You happen to be seeing one particular side consistently every day here. There's a whole other side going on. I love you for watching. Come on now. We're trying this from a different location. This is the uh, shaft. shaft. I like to give the guy the shaft. This was never painted before, is right? Is that any Mike painted that. No, I'm beginning of the season. But yeah, it wasn't. The one. There was made no, all this. Yeah. All oh my gosh, they bricks. This is all phony. Mike Lee did all that. It's good. It's talented. Stephanie, you finish, please. One more, please. What are all these dentist chairs doing? That's here? for something sick later. Oh no! Yeah, the dermatologist is yes, coming. Yes, the Botox. And she's gonna do Botox, Botox. the whole bit. I told you all the lunchtime procedures. Are, come on. What? I'm so hungry. <laughs> And I'm disgustingly distracted. Did you get it? Yeah, I don't like it. You don't like them? I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. This is why I can't go to the movies. This is why, exactly. Did you hear me talking to Wendy McClendon? How are we jumping around in that conversation? But that's what you do when you talk to people that you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be some stupid, polished, fluid conversation that makes sense. It's messy. Oh, my stomach. They can hear it all the way over in Jersey. Why am I changing my shoes? I'm so comfortable. You know, there's something to be said for flats. It's called comfort. Ugh. Bill Bellamy, always a great time. Uh, this outfit, Victoria's Secret catalog. I have it in like three or five colors, right, Steph? Yep. Cheap, cheerful, matte jersey, stupid. The stupid is good. Throw on a pair of flats, a vintage belt, and uh, you know, some tights. My old friend, the Twan Bray. And I am on my way. I think I want to wear uh, tights tomorrow also. And I don't mind wearing flats. I don't. I mean, heels are sexy, but I'm not here to be sexy. I'm here to tell the jokes and laugh. I am so hungry. What do you mean, What's that? Oh, I, oh, the food's here? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rob. All right, let me just say goodbye to these guys first. Wait, hang on. Just give me a moment to say hello to my guest, okay? And then we'll walk together to the office. But when we get there, I can't talk to you anymore because I'm so hungry, honestly. Plus, Mimsor left a full rack of clothes for me to try on that he says we cannot keep uh, past vacation, which, as you know, we go on vacation beginning tomorrow. So, hold on. Hi, everybody. Sorry. I'm going to eat, Lonnie. You can probably hear my stomach growling from here. I've got a hunger headache that just will not quit. I ordered this salad from this place called Gigi's. And I do, did a create your own salad. Bye, everyone. Okay, so I chose the house blend of romaine lettuce and stuff. And then I got albacore tuna, chickpeas and kidney beans, broccoli, extra vinaigrette, and, um, oh, and I ordered a sandwich, too. Up, I have to eat. What kind of sandwich? I got a, um, what the hell did I get? 
Oh, I forget. Whatever it is, I've got all the condiments to make it um, even better. Worthy. Yeah, it's gonna be really good. Thank you. See you at 145. Thank you. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Where are you going for lunch? Across the street. What are you eating? What is across the street? Craft services. Yeah, craft services. Oh! Free, free. Uh, yes, no, yeah, no, you know we're in two buildings, and so across the street uh, is where, what we're doing today is we're taping tomorrow's show. So this, this is like a Thursday on a Tuesday. We're, we're taping tomorrow's show, and then tomorrow this time I will be laying on a beach with my uh, blonde wig that I have worked on overnight, and when I show you on the next day after show that I do, I mean, it's good, right? I'd be right? surprised you see me walk by. Walk by where? On the beach. You're going where we're going? I'll be like, what up? I might. I'm thinking about it. You can't make a last minute decision. You know yes, how much I they... can. I went to Greece at the last minute. The plane tickets are going to be a fortune. Mm -hmm. Work it out. Well, look. All I know is that tomorrow I'm going to be on the beach with my candy yum yum lipstick <laughs> and gigantic cat eye glasses. The I mean, it's really nice. The cattiest, yep. And my center part blonde wig. And even though it's 11:30 in the morning, I'll probably have a buzz because that's what you do on on vacation. On, you know, on vacation. You mm -hmm. start with a Bloody Mary and you work it from there. Take it down. Vacation's the only place I drink a Bloody Mary, and I feel like Miss Jane Pittman. That is the mm -hmm. oldest drink ever, isn't it? It's to have the dog that bit you. What's that? A Bloody Mary. The hair of the dog that bit you. Yeah. It's like a hangover remedy. Is it? Yeah. Well, then I won't be drinking that. <laughs> you drink it the, tomorrow, the following morning, then you continue on. And that little Kevin, I love that he's old enough now. He loves the water and swims around and dips and dives and does it. We sit close to the water. All three of us love the water and we love the sun. So there's never a fight, you know. Although I'm probably the most obsessed. I'm the one who gets up at 9 o'clock in the morning and goes out and makes sure that the towels are properly laid out and that whole bit. And I, I'm the obnoxious one who takes two extra chairs. So we're a family of three, but I take five chairs. And you want to say something to me, only you won't. You know why? Because my hair is so fierce, you're scared I might... You know, ah, yeah. I two. You need a chair. You need extra chairs and lots of towels. Family of three needs ten towels. If I'm sitting out there from nine o'clock in the morning until literally until six o'clock at night, we eat every single meal out there, and then by the time we get inside, the plans about going to dinner um, on the compound, of course. But we don't. We don't. We don't venture out. Like, uh, -uh you're not gonna stab me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I watch too much Locked Up Abroad. Okay. I will just stay right on the compound. <laughs> and, and anything that I need brought in, you know, you can hire an assistant from, you know, where you're staying. And then let them go uh, get stuff to the groceries or whatever you need. Let them go. By the time we get in from the sun, we are so beat down drained. and drained <laughs> that we never end up even doing anything but getting room service. But that's the kind of family that we are. We are fine with room service. You can send us to Greece and, because the sun there is beautiful, we actually want to go to Greece. Um, we're chasing the sun. That's our favorite thing to do. I don't care about seeing, don't call me ignorant, but I don't care about seeing ancient ruins. I don't care about getting grape leaves from the great places around town. I don't care about buying Greece in Greece. All I care about is staying on the compound, because I watch too much Locked Up Abroad, and getting whatever they order, whatever you can order from room service. That's it. That's it. I'm just chilling. And if my son flinches and wants to go see an ancient ruin, I'm going to tell him, well, you Either. do that on your own time. I'm not leaving. Do that on a school trip. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Don't bother me. Mm -mm. Mm. <laughs> and then there's San Tropez. I don't care about any Sancho or any paying. I care about laying in the sun and ordering room service. And and if there is something divine that I want, that's when you hire an assistant. You tell the assistant to go out and bring it back. Exactly. That is ignorant. I know. Especially because I come from such well-traveled family. 
my parents, they, God, they love to travel. and They love it all. And when they travel, do they have, like, their itinerary already written out before you guys land and they want to do everything on a little ship? No, no, I don't travel with them. Are you okay. out of your mind? I would never. But my parents have done everything. They've driven across the country. They have done the Alaskan cruise. Uh, they've been everywhere. South America, China, so yada, yada, yada. They're like Griswolds. They, they really are. Like, my father's got, like, a, a closet full of suits that got made in China. Mm -hmm. My mother coming back with the pearls. Um, they, they shop in Italy for the... Like, they just do way too much. I'm just like, would you sit down and have a Bloody Mary at the... So I could never travel with them. I like that, though. They enjoy it. They live in. They, they are. That, that's who I want to be when I grow up. I want to be my mom and dad. You know, they don't have much, but what they do have is good. They're happy with it. That's yep. all that matters. They're good. They're good. Anyway, and when we were younger and they would travel, because they would, you know, the school teachers and, you know, educators and stuff, they had the whole summer off. Mm -hmm. So they would travel for, like, gee, two or three weeks. They're, they'd be gone, and they'd have my Aunt Pod come up and stay with us. Well, now, Aunt Pod was always fun to have around. Because Aunt Pod. She was all, as old as that name sounds, rest in peace. If she was alive now, she'd be like 150. She was the daughter of a slave and used to wear this bracelet um, that was that was bent on the plantation, made of a fork. And she used to have no tolerance for kids. I'm going to tell you something about Aunt Pod. She had no tolerance for much of anything. But the stories she tell mm, were the best. Aunt Pod, daughter of a slave. So she had no kids? Aunt Pod passed away when she was up. Oh, yes, my Aunt Elizabeth. Okay. And Aunt Pod and Aunt Elizabeth lived together. And Aunt Elizabeth was married to Uncle Willie. And Uncle Willie used to burn me with cigarettes all the time. They're just smoking at the kitchen table. And he was smoking at the kitchen table and throwing his arm back and just burning. My Aunt Pod passed away at 101 years old. Wow. And she, uh, it was a big deal when she started voting, you know, because at 101, you see a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what? And it was a big deal, too. Like, when she passed, when she passed away, it was a big deal in the town. And when she first went to vote, it was a big deal. It's good when you have, like, people in your family. Get that conversation going before, you know, they pass on. Mm -hmm. Old people. People who came in off the boat or, like, you know, Aunt Pod. Aunt Pod was a housekeeper. I like that name, Aunt Pod. Yeah. Yeah, P-O-D, Aunt Pod. No tolerance for kids. No tolerance for nothing, honey. <laughs> Just the old crotchety. Rest in peace. I'm about to fight. I'm so hungry. And plus, he left me a rack of clothes. I, I think... Uh-oh. <laughs> Cat, my dad. Uh-oh. Be quiet before I chase you with an owl. <laughs> Owls are like the devil uh, where he's from. I love you for watching. Uh, see you. Um, oh, I have a headache. Tomorrow or something. I'm going. Um, the after show, unfortunately, is going to be short again today. Everybody's complaining. Oh, sorry, Joni. Yep. I see you all have commentary on the after show. Don't you think I'd spend more time with you if I had it? I love talking to you, taking off my makeup and doing stuff. But I have to hurry up over to Bryant Park. There's a big book event over there. And I have to be there by 12 o'clock. And I'm not gonna go to a book event like this. I'm gonna put on jeans and a t-shirt and heels, uh, change my wig and take my makeup down a little bit. And then after I leave Bryant Park, I'm doing question and answer, a book read, and a bit of a book signing. I'll be there like for about an hour and a half. And uh, Bryant Park is beautiful. It's a nice day here in New York. The sun is out. It's supposed to rain a little bit later. And people go there and they take their sandwiches and they sit and they flirt and, and mingle. So there are always people at Bryant Park. And then I'm going to uh, the Wall Street Journal for an interview. And then I'm gonna go home quickly. Uh, I got something to check on. And then I'm gonna come back in the city in time for a dinner engagement at seven o'clock. Come on in. Thank you, boss. Thank you, bye, Brandon. Bye, boys. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, look who's on TV. I can't take her. She's on Dr. Oz. I'll put it on mute.
Yes, Jason. So I have a few of your favorite Wait, magazines. Wait, excuse me, Jason. Yes, Antoine? That was a good Dr. Oz. Oh, yeah. He's only looking at the hair because he's nominated for an Emmy. Do you know who else is in, do you know who else is in this category? You have to see. Dr. Oz? No, uh, the Emmy, Emmy nominations are out for daytime and Antoine is nominated. Again, okay. no, I don't. For best hair. Uh, no, who he's up against. Do you remember when we won, we were up against Ellen? And that's not hard. She is. Short hair. <laughs> you know, like if I had short hair, that's what I would do. And then Drew Carey at The Price is Right? Uh, really? Oh, and The View. All right, that's a lot of hair that and four women. Hair. But we won. He keeps, the, he keeps the Emmy at his house, but he let me borrow it for a week. I drove around with it strapped to the hood of my car like a real pimp. <laughs> Look at Dr. Oz had me touching the heart. He had me touching a heart. He's grossing me out. I just love him. That's a real heart? Yeah, it's a real heart. You know, he was showing me the effects of um, eating fatty food and heart disease and everything. So just seeing him make, bring it home more, like, wow, that's real when you see the fat in the heart? Yeah, but that's not my thing. I mean, I know I talk a lot of mess about all the food that I eat, but I eat pretty clean. Yeah. Like, everything in moderation. And I like that you advise people to do swaps, because that's like something realistic and not that difficult once you try it. You're like, oh, this isn't so bad. It's not. Yeah. Like, I've swapped uh, lettuce for kale. I like kale. I like kale too. I just learned how to roast the chips in the oven. It was so easy. You did? It was so good. Olive oil, salt, and pepper, 30 minutes in the oven. It's delicious. And do you also, um, have you swapped they're it out? So they're expensive. They're like $9 a bag. Oh, yeah. I know. They're very ridiculous. expensive kale chips. Look, do you, um, do you eat salad? Yeah. You should try kale instead of lettuce. Number one, it lasts longer in your refrigerator. Doesn't your lettuce rot after like two days? I went home yesterday and there was the foulest smell in my, in my apartment. I'm like, what is that? And it was the, the kale that I threw out, I guess. And <laughs> it smells so Do you have a gar garbage disposal? No. Oh. I have to take it out frequently or that happens. Yeah. Uh, if you have a garbage disposal, do you know how you keep it clean and make your house smell really good? You throw your citrus in there. I never throw away oranges and lemons and limes. As a matter of fact, I purposely buy them. You drop one in the garbage disposal and you let it twirl around. It lights up your whole kitchen with the smell of lemon. Okay, I've heard that. I like that. Yeah, and, and with your dirty sponges. You know, you put your sponge in the microwave, microwave. for like a minute and a half. It yeah. kills all the germs. I do that too. Yeah. Um, do you kiss your dog in the mouth? Because yes. that Okay, then you've just done, done everything that you do good. But they say that it's really it's bad. They say you shouldn't let them sleep in the bed too, and I don't do that. Why can't they sleep in the bed? I guess for the same reason. There's germs that can go back and forth. Do you walk your dog? There's a amount of germs, isn't it? Yeah, but I wipe his feet every time before I put him in my bed. I wipe the bottom of his paws before I let him go on my clean sheets. Do you wipe your paws before you get in the bed? Of course. Yesterday, it was a full, well, first of all, I do walk around here with no shoes on, which is disgusting. Then at Andy, all of a sudden, my corn just was throbbing after the show. So I took my shoes off on the set and I walked barefoot back to the green room. So you know what that walk is. As soon as I get home, that's like one of the first things that I do every day. I, I take a shower. It's like a bird bath. Like the water doesn't even touch the rest of me practically. I do it for the purpose of washing my feet. Really? Well, think about when you walk, like we have carpet in our bedroom. And also, she wants you this in the bed. Yeah. I right? Feet, I have the nastiest feet. If there's one part of my body that I can change, that would be it. Your feet. They're nasty. No one wants to be seeing my feet in flip flops. The summer's coming. <laughs> I'm trying to put this, um, someone told me to put a, what's the camphor that you put on your chest? What is that called? Va Vicks Vapor Rub. I put that on my feet. Have you ever tried that? No. What does that do? Well, really? Yes. Um, it's supposed to like heal the, the chat, the chafing and the, it's disgusting. I really don't want to be I do that. About this, but yeah, when you have a cold too, put it in socks. Yeah, why are you being so embarrassed? This is the after show. We keep um, it real. It's, can, it's, can I just tell you one more thing? My feet are disgusting and they... So am I! Okay, and someone told me that this is like a good solve. Like Vaseline, you know how people put Vaseline? Like why don't you just get a Credu knife and some fresh blades? I, believe me, I do that. I do the thing from the infomercial that you scrape the side. The, the petty egg? Petty egg, yeah, okay. I do it all. But a Credu knife never slices it. Away. They say like now that some doctors say they'll do like laser, you know, do laser, but I heard that it doesn't really work. And the only thing you can really do to get rid of it is to take a super powerful antibiotic, but it also kills the good thing. So the doctor's like, if I were you, 
I would just live with it. So that's what I'm doing because I don't want to kill, take an antibiotic just to get rid of some flesh fungus. Well, Jason, do your feet hurt? No. Nope. Well, then leave them alone okay. because as far as I'm concerned, your feet are down there. If you don't like it, don't look, number one. Second of all, your feet are made to get you from point A to point B. I would rather have ugly feet that don't hurt than beautiful feet that hurt me all the time. And furthermore, if you'll take a look at Jason, he looks like Clark Kent. So all of the beauty is up there, Thank not you. down there. And he stands at six, five? Four. Four. And he's more Harry-ish than String Bean. There's nothing worse than a tall man who has, you know, I've told you this. No, but tell me again. <laughs> it's nice when a tall man is um, like built like you and Harry. Do you know what I mean? Prince Harry. Yes. Yeah, he has a good build. What other Harry is there? Charlotte York's Harry. Remember he used to sit on the <laughs> furniture with no panties on? Yeah. All right, Jason. All right, so what are we talking about for well, tomorrow? Well, I have magazines, but I also wanted to talk to you about Ray J, because he's coming on, and we want to ask him one important question about Whitney Houston. Okay. So I was wondering what that one question you think should be. I have some suggestions, and I wanted to get your opinion. Well, we can continue this line of conversation um, as I escort our guests out, because then while you're here, I can multitask. I can take off my wig. You've seen me wigless. And I can take off my eyelashes and get ready to go to Bryant Park at the same time. So there, I, I, you got a longer after show than I thought you would. And you got a chance to know Jason and his rotten feet better. Oh, great. Jason, what's your title here at the show? Same as Suzanne, senior supervising producer. Senior supervising producer. So there you have it. You've met another person on the Wendy staff, up close and personal. Tomorrow, it's Eve. I've only interviewed with Eve once. That was at least 15 years ago when I worked in Philly. That was back when her boyfriend was Stevie J. <laughs> um, so I'd like to know, what's Eve up to? What's she been doing? I can't wait to catch up with her. Hope you'll be watching. Love you. Bye-bye. I don't care. I love it. I don't. That song makes me feel like 15 years old. Do you know what song I'm talking about? We play it, um, it's one of the many jams that we play in between, um, you know, in the commercials and stuff. While you're watching commercial, we're behind the scenes jamming. We're gonna die young. I always feel guilty about saying that, you know. But I really do like Kesha and I really do like that song as well. Somehow I always skip over those particular words, like whenever the song comes on. Na -na -na, let's make the most of it. <laughs> What do you think about Leanne Rhymes? I like her. I like her. I like her new album. I hope she gets a Grammy and I wish her well. That's it. And I get Brandy's standpoint also. You know, Brandy is the wife and Brandy also has an obligation as a reality TV star. She's got to keep stirring the pot. But like I was telling Leanne on camera and I told her that behind the scenes, I said, one of you has got to be big enough to let it go. <clears throat> Leanne said that she can't let it go because Brandy won't let it go. But you know, there is a saying, and that saying is, when a dog howls, and neither one of them are dogs, I'm telling you a saying. When a dog howls at the moon, that's not news. When the moon howls back, now that's the news. So, you know, somebody's got to stop howling, that's all. That's how I conduct my life. It's how I've always conducted my life. It's not because I'm not good at fighting my own battles, but the way you really shut somebody down is to act as if they don't exist. Now, obviously, they have to go co-parent and step-parent the children, but aside from that, when you don't feed into people's mess, you, all these celebrities that you all love and these Twitter wars and you all... Now, I realize that you know we're the After Show family and everything, and we all have our own opinions, and sometimes your opinions of the things that I do and the things that I say makes me want to get very upset too cool for that. You're not going to call me out and have me get on and become a part of the funky cyber world and all that stuff. Wouldn't give it the time of day. You got to be the bigger person. You know what I was doing? God, doggone it. I'm shopping for a freaking... Oh! I told you that our refrigerator has water leaking from underneath it. The ice maker keeps breaking. Well, 
We've lived in our house now for about six, about six years, almost six years. And uh, we bought it from the original owners, very nice people, great refrigerator. But you know what? They think they lived there for 10 years. So refrigerators are, I mean, the way they built things these years, we're lucky that it was still working when we moved into the house. So of course we need a new refrigerator. And it's not just a regular refrigerator. It's, you know, a refrigerator, you know, it's a nice refrigerator. So my refrigerator repair man, yeah, I still have, I have one of those. They still make those. When's the last time you ever thought to call somebody to come over to your house to fix like your TV or whatever? See, back in the day, TV repairmen were a thing. And you just take your TV, you unplug it from the wall, you bring it to the shop, he fixes it, and then you bring it back home. But these days, there are certain things that aren't, honestly, that aren't meant to be repaired. Like TVs, maybe a refrigerator, maybe a washer or dryer. But for the most part, as soon as they go on the fritz, I think you're supposed to throw them away. My thing is, is that I'm very, very obsessive about running my own household. I will not let anybody else do it. So, it, you know, all my husband and son know is just leave the towel on the floor in front of the refrigerator before it ruins the floors in the kitchen, you know, with all the moisture and stuff, all of the, the water. And it's not leaking like a sieve. And it doesn't do it all the time. Maybe three times a week that we, you know, puddle of water. Not a big puddle, but puddle enough. And I know what you're saying, Wendy, don't you work, work a job, can't you do it? Yeah. Yes. And I am not Mother Earth, but I do have this thing about landfills. I've contributed enough to the landfills in my life, and now I'm at a different place. I cannot stand throwing out couches or refrigerator. Like, like what, what becomes of that stuff? It's a damn shame. So. I've been, uh, we've been fixing the refrigerator. My mom and dad come up next week and they'll be here for the whole summer. And they're the only people that I would trust to go out and make sure that the refrigerator gets delivered and is intact. And in our kitchen we have the panels on the refrigerator that match the panels in the kitchen. So it's not like you just get a new refrigerator and wheel it in. We've got to find one that you know, where the panels, so that it all looks like one seamless cabinet. Tristan, you understand what I'm saying? Yep. So it can't just be any refrigerator. And now I'm on Broadway. Dog bought it. I should have done this in the winter when this mess started, before I knew I was going to Broadway, when it was all good. Now I'm so busy, I, I don't even have time. Do you have a refrigerator in your garage or in the basement, like most houses in the suburbs? Okay, well, we have one in the basement. I don't even feel like going down there. <laughs> there might be three things in it, and they're probably all rotten. I don't even like the idea of a basement. What do you keep down there? When I was growing up in the 70s, basements were always done with paneling. We had white wood paneling in the basement, and we would go down there and kiss boys, and um, oh, that's always where our sleepovers would be. My parents made the basement up. There was a full bar, like Cheers, like a gigantic, you know, oak bar. My father's study was down there, a full bathroom with a shower and everything, and um, a giant Zenith TV. Do they still make Zenith TVs? I think so, yeah. And the basement was big enough where my brother and I, Tommy, we would roller skate in the basement. Like, we would have a great time, but the basement was always fixed up. Now as a grown one, but the problem with the basement, have I shared this with you? I'm, like, allergic to that door that goes down. Like, I work too hard to be watching my head as I'm going downstairs to somebody's basement for a party. I'm coming to your house. I'm not going to the basement. You send everybody else down there. I'm going to hold court right in the kitchen. My mom, my mom and dad, and they've always been way more social than me. They would always have parties at the house. Oh, soirees, not just parties, parties, like soirees, like hundreds of people. And half the people would be upstairs on the main floor where the doorbell is, and everybody else would be down in the basement. Watch your head. My father would be tending the bar, and it'd be all good. All you'd hear is Marvin Gaye. I used to go out and party. And they'd have a good time. Now, there are two things that I work too hard to do in life. One, to go down to the basement <laughs> where I gotta watch my head. And two, a homemade vacation in Martha's Vineyard where you gotta carry your own chair to the beach 
and there's nobody to serve you a Mai Tai. Even Tristan is saying, mm -mm, I'm not doing it. I work too hard. I grew up all my life going to Martha's Vineyard. P.S. My family still goes to Martha's Vineyard. My parents will be up here next week. Uh, they will hold court uh, at the Black, at the Inkwell, uh, which is the beach they like to go to. I think the last, the last week of August into the first week of September. Oh, my sister, my nieces, nephews, the rest of the family, they all love going up there, that homemade vacation. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. My son loves to go up there, go. I work too hard to drive someplace to get on some ferry where I have to wait in line to be on a beach that looks like a beach in New Jersey, you know, black water and cigarette butts. And, you have to, and I get it, it's earthy and everything, but no, no. So back to the basement. We have backup downstairs in the basement, but I'm not going down there, so that's what the boy is for. Make him take everything down there, and then I guess we'll unplug the refrigerator, wheel it out to a landfill someplace, and get a new one. Then I was thinking about raising my couch. What do you think? Shut up, Tristan. Tristan's over there nodding. No, I was about to, after I searched and looked at, um, I want to I hone down my top three favorite refrigerators, and then when my parents get here next week, then I'll send them out to take a look at them in person. They like to feel useful. They like that kind of stuff. Mommy, Daddy, I know you're watching the after show. That's going to be that's gonna be your assignment. Thank you. All right, so they sell these, um, these caster block things that you can put under all four under all four of, uh, of uh, the couch. And it'll raise the couch by maybe four inches. Hmm? I'm not raising it for you. <laughs> no, I love you. No, we already know each other. Like, you know, I, I'm not raising it for you. You know what I'm raising it for? Because what I find is, is that when people come in here and they want to do interviews and stuff, that they always request me to move my seat into a chair or over there, you know, something just a little bit higher. And I don't want to do that. So since we're going to be here for four more, se you know, four more seasons until 2017, I figure I might as well raise this couch. And I'm thinking of replacing that one. If you'll notice the bottom of it, do you see it sagging? Okay, that would be the Kevins coming in here and flopping down and the couch sags like this. So I'm thinking of replacing it with like a silver one or something funky. I don't know. You don't mind if I walk you to the door, do I? Do you? Yes, I did have a cold yesterday. You said you noticed it. I've got so much Zycam in my system right now. It is going down. But you know what? Woo! I feel so much better today than I did yesterday. So much better. So much better. I'm about to order some tuna fish and I'm gonna eat them with these crackers. I am addicted to tuna fish and there's not there's something that's not good about it. Do you notice I eat a lot of tuna fish? I eat a lot of tuna fish. I think I'm what are you doing? Oh, never mind. No, <laughs> never mind. Hey Marco. I don't care. <laughs> That's your song? Uh, I love that song. It makes me feel so 18. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it dope. Well, no, it's a fun loving song. Yes, that would be it. <laughs> dope would not be the word. Marco, you know, is our audience warm up. And he does a wonderful job. I like your cologne, Marco. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Easy. Code. Please, can you help me? Hey, Ro. Hey, you got some gifts. 
It's okay. Look, I'll take them later. Can you order me a um, mmm? Can you order um a little container of tuna fish from Gigi's? Just the tuna fish. I got the crackers right here. Wait, no, here I come. No, 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 no. no please, please let me in. Wow, look how clean it is in here. What is going on? It's always clean. No, there's usually jewelry everywhere. No, yeah, but we transferred it to the cupboard downstairs. To the cupboard. That. <laughs> Yeah. I have got to tell you, well, here's the thing. You know, we only have about, what, 18 more looks for the whole... Yeah, okay. Well, we, well we're, yeah. we're doing shows until the end of July, as you know. And you know this is the main wardrobe. And normally, everything is lined up like this. Look what's going on. Well, we borrow a lot of things here at the show, but we also purchase a lot of things. And a lot of things somehow <laughs> make it back to Jersey in my own <laughs> personal closet as well. We've got 26 more shows, I think. Yeah. All right. Now, um, what do you need? Well, I really just need <laughs> tuna fish and some gum. That's not in here. Mm -mm. <laughs> Good thing I was sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I just came up to order. I want some tuna fish for my crackers, and she just gave me some gum. So now I'm going. Now we're not back, back until two forty-five. Well, okay, yeah, I know I have time. Yeah. So what time do you need me to be there? I really wasn't looking for you. Okay, just you have me all like jittery now. No, I just wanted to um. This sauce okay. Mmm. Ooh. Who sent it? I don't know. Let me see. Hold on. Somebody sent me. I love the good stuff. Don't care me. No. This is from Melgen Enterprises in LA. Melgen Enterprises. Give that to um my management. Here they are. The bottle or the note? The, the note. <laughs> the bottle stays with me. Now, Tristan, I want you to hold on gently or watch me as I walk away. I don't want you falling down the steps. All right. I'll walk and Tristan will walk forward. Tristan, don't fall. Here's the note. Who's it from? John Feltheimer. John Feltheimer. Oh, my gosh. Fabulous. Thanks, John. John is everything at Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Thank you, John. John Feltheimer is... um the king of everything at Lionsgate. And it says, congratulations on the Fox renewal. Keep up the great work. Lionsgate is the parent company of the company that produces the Wendy show. And that would be Debmar Mercury. That crazy cat you see at the end go, <laughs> that's them. We have officially spent more than enough time together. I don't want to hear any complaints about a four minute after show. I'm going in my office, I'm going to wait for my tuna fish, and then you know what we're going to do? In about an hour and a half, we are going to do tomorrow's show. You already know this, it's not a secret, we're on a summer schedule, and we do two shows on Wednesday. So I'm about to go in here and... <laughs> saving this for the weekend. Um, I'm about to go in here and take a little nap and wait for the tuna fish. I love you for watching. Take care. An old friend. The original. Two dresses in one. Look, it's, it's um, charcoal gray with pink accents on one side and all pink on the other. This is my original Angela Dean dress. This is the dress that made me fall in love. And I still couldn't figure out where to go buy it. So we got in touch with her and she's still make, custom making the dresses. Go to DeanZine.com. <laughs> That's the best I can tell you. You can't walk into Lauren Taylor and pick one up. I have no idea why it is that Angela would not capitalize on being able to make such a beautiful dresses. I often feel as though I'm her only fan. And I'm only one woman. Can you go into Lauren Taylor and buy an Angela Dean? Not yet, but she's working on it. And she's like, naming this particular line the Wendy? That's the Wendy, yes. The, the sleeveless ones or the long sleeve, just both Any of them? Body licious, body rolling. Any body rolling dress made of good material is going to be called the Wendy. Well, that's nice and that's cute, but Angela, people like this stuff. Ooh, that's Sam Champion. In a different life, I would have definitely been his friend. That's sophisticated. Fun. He seems like he'd be fun after work. <sighs> Woo! 
He seems like he'd be fun after work. I like him. I like Rochelle too. She's like 37 years old. She had a very ambiguous look, right? You couldn't tell whether she was 22 or whatnot. I, if he doesn't get the Emmy this year for hair, who cares? I know who my Emmy winner is. All due respect to everybody on daytime, but nobody's got better hair than what he does here. He dyed, colored. I've seen this wig sitting on the wig head practically since September. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it takes him a it takes him a long time to focus and make the wigs happen. And I've hi boo. Hey, hey. But I've stopped losing patience with Antoine because he 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 sets me up already with so many nice dresses. I mean, with so, he sets me up with so many nice wigs already um, that I don't rush him. Here's wig. I wanted to talk to him. Wig. I already wanted to get something to eat as the makeup, and I'll be joining you. Yeah. All right. Well, then come over here. We get fed. We're going across the street. I just wanted to tell Wig that I really like the wig, and I was just telling them that he takes a long time to get the wigs done, doesn't he? How long was this sitting on the... I mean, for a minute. For a long time. You see, I didn't even complain about you not showing your earrings, because the wig was so beautiful. The wig is so beautiful. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay. Um, do you want to know what I would have worn to the daytime Emmys if I went? I don't know how to turn his TV down, so I'll just show you. Do you remember Elizabeth Hurley in that Versace dress with all those pins? And cutouts, well, honey, this cutout hits me right here at the rib meat. And it is short, like I could never wear this on the show. Too short for a woman my age. But you know me, the queen of inappropriate. So I'll figure out some place to wear this dress. Mem Sor got it for me. It was just too, too jet lagged. It's just, it's just all too much, it was just all too much. Here's my Ellen kit. Um, I really can't wait to start knitting and I really do think that I want to I mean I know that the internet they tell me they have all kinds of instructional videos on the internet that can teach you how to do stuff but you know I like the personal touch you know just, I'm not going to text you, text you a whole book I text you to say I'm on my way I'm not going to uh, you know communicate with you uh, through anything other than face to face so I think I want to learn how to knit face to face like what is all this why do, you have to, why do you need all this? I thought it was two sticks and a spool of thread. <sighs> Once I get started, though, forget about it. I'm telling you, the reason that I want to learn how to knit is because, you know, first of all, I want to start making some of my own um, sweatery things. I'm tired of sweaters always being so short on my arms. And at the very least, if I buy, say, a black sweater or a light blue sweater or something and the arms only come to here, then I can take out my needle and thread or my, my knitting needles, right? And I can elongate the arms myself. <sighs> Plus, I, I want to make, I would like to make a sweater for my husband. I would like to make a sweater for my son. Um, and But most of all, I want my long sweater leggings. Yeah. And I heard it's so relaxing to knit and it's not quite as messy as um, painting, which, you know, I still um, definitely want to buy my canvases and paint and stuff. And another thing I want to learn how to do this um, this year, this, this summer, but I won't have time to learn how to do this until um, August after Chicago's over. I want to learn how to, yeah, it must have been really hot out there. I got a little, a little perspiration but not as much as I used to. I want to learn how to, um, I want to start going to pottery, you know, on Saturdays. I used to do it in summer camp. I really like it. I, I really like the idea of, you know, making vases and making things and then putting them in the baker and then painting them over. And yeah, you know, giving some of them away for gifts to people. I think that the personal touch is the best touch, personally speaking. Uh, but if people don't want my pottery, then I'll just start stacking it up in the house like I have all my other stuff just stacked up in the house. <laughs> it's all homemade at my house. It is. <laughs> but homemade is good, Tristan. Everything is it's a story nice. behind it, yeah, right? It does. And I want to go to pottery like maybe Saturday mornings. Just get into it with that wheel and clay and baking stuff. And I think that those are nice 
those personal touch things are really nice to give away. I often get asked to give things for charity auction. So we do stuff like we'll give a pair of tickets to the Wendy show for a charity auction. We get auction winners here all the time. Um, I've had autographed books for charity auction. But better than those two things, a nice piece of pottery made by me. I'll sign it and take a picture with it. And then you, you know, stuff like that. But there's nothing like the old school. So I think that the place that I need to go to learn how to really get my knit on is um, in a senior facility. <laughs> I like old people. Especially when they have big, giant, stupid mouths. They just say anything. Oh, nothing like feisty old. Happy birthday, Joan Rivers. I tweeted you yesterday. I wished you happy birthday on Howard this morning. Damn, Howard. I can't tell you what it feels like when, um, I guess much, much like Sue Simmons. Do you remember when, when I met Sue Simmons? You know, I wanted to be like Sue Simmons, the newscaster here in New York. Um, I didn't want to be like Howard on the radio because I realized that he, uh, you know, he's a, a special kind of person. But, you know, I was born with this mouth. And uh, I guess, you know, Howard's got a slick mouth, too. And, um, you know, as uh, from the perspective of a fan, he's entertained me from state to state when it was just me in the car commuting from D.C. to New York, where I was working two different radio uh, shifts many states away. Uh, it was Howard who was consistent. When I crossed state lines, you know, when I get out of D.C., then I turn on Philly radio, and Howard was still in the middle of the same sentence. Then when I got out of Philly radio, driving up the turnpike, then I turn on New York radio, and he's still telling the same story. He was just a constant thread uh, in my in my climb. And, and kept me just very, very entertained. And I never in my wildest years thought that, uh, you know, Howard and I would be meeting or that I would, he'd be somebody who in this business, as far as um, uh, um, people who I um, hold dear to me go, personally speaking, um, I hold him dear. So I went from being a fan and he was a great career inspiration to being just cool as hell, cool ass Howard. He wants to do our show, too. I, I mean, I wasn't going to pressure him. I just figured, you know, I had daytime. You know, what does he care? Yeah, I mean, he went on the talk, but that's because America's Got Talent and, you know, that whole bit. I just, I don't get offended. You know, you don't come to the show, you don't come to the show. Heather Locklear is not coming to the show either. She's, uh, she's painfully shy or something to that effect. She doesn't like talk shows. Uh, but, you know, she's the original friend in my head. I don't get offended by that. But he wants to come to our show. It's always fun doing his show. I have an appreciation for Howard and Robin and Baba Booey and the gang. Yep. For an appreciation for you too. Love you for watching. See you next time. Bye. <sighs> Wasn't Elmer cute? His nappy little hair. And he was belching. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for Have a great break. I love David Mizajewski. You know, he goes on a lot of the shows. He's been around for a while. He really knows his animals. And, you know, I, I respect animals. I respect them so much that I just would rather just leave them alone because I always feel like they smell the fear. But David, through our friendship, through this show, he's made me feel very comfortable around the animals. So comfortable, I didn't even put on flats or slippers or running shoes. Normally... You know, I don't mess around with the animals. I want to be ready to run. I kept my heels on. <laughs> yeah. Where's the killer? Look how Memsors really just matched this outfit. Look. Look. It's, and the theme is, it's a safari dress. It's cute. So now, it's time to go to L.A. Thank you. Thanks. I'm going to be... Um, the first stop when I get off the plane is I have to go right to the Ellen studio. Ow! The glam squad is flying there before me because literally I have to go right to Ellen and I've got like an hour to get ready before she takes our segment. And then, after that, I'm free for the day. And then, oh no wait, oh my god. No, nope, I go to the Grove where Mario uh, tapes extra, extra, extra. And I have a book signing at Barnes and Nobles in LA. LA is a big city. I have no idea which one. I wish the I Grove. could tell you. The Grove. Oh, at, at the, the Grove? Grove? Yep. Oh my gosh. The book signing is at the Grove. The Grove. Then 
I go to sleep and then wake up and we go to San Francisco for Friday. We have a book signing in, or Thursday, Friday. I'm so confused. Anyway, we have, I have a book signing in San Francisco and then we leave right after that book signing and apparently we're taking car service to um, Santa Clara. Santa Clara and San Francisco are only like 45 minutes apart from one another. Here, we'll go in here. Great trip, folks. Thanks. Bye, Brendan. Thank you. Have a great time Enjoy off. your vacation. Oh, you too. Be safe. Yep. So then, um, Santa Clara is only like 45 minutes away. So we'll drive to Santa Clara, and that's where it's gay day at the park. I'm so looking forward to it. I'm going to wear sneakers and jeans. I'm going to wear. I'm still wearing these sneakers, right? Yeah. Ooh, they got scuffling, definitely. Um, I've given them away. Okay. Jennifer Lopez has these too. <laughs> I'm going to wear sneakers and jeans at the amusement park. And then I'm going to take these shoes and I'm going to wear them on Ellen, you said? It might be those. I, yeah. Maybe? Yeah, I'm still debating. Remember, these are a one trick pony unless I'm bringing a red dress. <laughs> You didn't have a red dress, but I'm, okay. I might give you another shoe. All right, pull this one out. And then these, these are so underworn. We've worn these only one time. I'm bringing these. Oh, a lady shoe. So you can pack three, four pants, right? As big, this is where I wish I had a size seven foot. Do you know what it's like packing these boats? <laughs> so my mom and dad are still in town, which is, you know, really wonderful. It's the only way that I can do this whole book tour. I told you they came in town specifically to, you know, help at home, keep things normal. Already, little Kev texts me during today's show talking about, can I have a hangout on Friday? Oh, no, I'm good. I'll take a few black ones. And I told him no. And the reason that I told him no is because, you know, like I love my mom and dad, and I'm so glad that they're part of our lives and everything. But sometimes, sometimes the old school doesn't quite understand how these modern kids are when they have their hangouts. You know, like, I don't mind the kids shooting the Nerf guns all around the house. They don't do that anymore, come to think of it. Yeah, that stopped about eight months ago. They go outside. They don't even play basketball. The girls sit like this on the basketball court, and the boys play a little something, but then they all end up sitting and just talking and hanging out. And that's when I come out with a platter of pizza rolls. As a Go back As a disguise of spying, exactly. I go out with the pizza rolls and bottles of water, and then they come back inside and they put their feet on the furniture and they they sit on the. I mean, they just do, you know like older people like they they just don't really understand that. And what breaks my heart sometimes is when there are things that we allow Kevin to do that my mother and father try to stop him from doing, and he immediately gets on his telephone and he'll call us. And he'll say, you know, he'll tell us about it. He'll be whispering, you know, in the closet or in another room or something. And then I have to call my parents. I'm just like, you know, I appreciate you all being there, but we allow Kevin, for instance, to eat dinner at 8:30 at night in our house. Growing up as a kid, that was unheard of. You eat at five o'clock. Kevin has a particular schedule that he likes for himself, and whatever works. The boys' grades are great, and you know what? He's, his the weight weight is not creeping on. The weight has crept off. Okay, and he just got his high top fade and that afro cut off. So now he has a low yes, Caesar. Thank you, yeah, I know. Me, shh, me too. Me too. He has a low Caesar, and he hasn't had a low Caesar since losing his baby weight. He looks so cute. But you know what? None of us eat at the same time at our house. I usually eat while I'm gathering his dinner, or sometimes I eat like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. My husband, I plate his dinner and put it in the warmer. Whenever he wants to eat it is fine with me. If he doesn't want to eat it, put it in the refrigerator. I'm, uh, I can't be the food police anymore. It annoys the hell out of them, and I could see where I was being annoying with it. Um, and then little Kevin likes to come home. He likes to do his homework. Then he likes to exercise, and he does like body resistance exercise, like the pull-up bar, push-ups, and then he likes to take a shower, and then he likes to have his dinner. Anyway, that's just an example of how, you know, our household differs from how my parents run their household, and so therefore I told him he can't have a hangout. He's got to wait until me and his father come back to town, so he can have a hangout on Saturday, where I'm there. Um, now I guess I'm going to um, ask you to go. Please don't be mad. Look, 
The entire show was on vacation until when, Tristan? Monday, June 3rd. Okay. Oh. And after that, no vacations until? August. August. And we'll only have one month off. Please enjoy the encore performance. I love you for watching, and I'll see you Monday, June 3rd. But don't forget to watch Liberace on Sunday night with a snack. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.